What's going on everybody, Mortem here, this time bringing you a quick DLC review for Remnant 2's Awakened King DLC, which dropped yesterday from the time of this video, and it brings with it a new area of La Somme to explore, which of course comes with new enemies, new locations, encounters, but we also get a new archetype to take a look at, that is to say a class of sorts, which is the Ritualist. Though it must be said towards the beginning, I was a little surprised to see DLC coming out for this game already, as Remnant 2 only launched a little less than four months ago now, like three and a half I believe if you want to get technical. But since then they've been pretty busy putting out patches and things which addressed some of the most commonly requested community feedback, and the patch that dropped alongside this DLC update also continued fixing a variety of bugs and addressing a few other gameplay issues. But we're here for the DLC of course, so let's talk about that. This particular DLC adds to the World of La Somme, which was an area the game would allow you to go previously, and this new area brings with it a new storyline that sort of finishes what the first two variations of this possible area hinted at and started. That is to say, this particular world was in the middle of a coup attempt of sorts between the Fey and the Draen, with the king of the realm having been the subject of an attempted assassination by his council. Being a god, however, he was not able to be killed, but rather simply put to sleep. And this particular DLC deals with the event of him finally waking up, with the events of what happened having driven him mad, causing all sorts of chaos and problems in the area. So in many ways this DLC simply wraps up a storyline that the original game started but didn't quite finish. Provided you've bought this DLC, how do you access it? Well, for the first time you access the DLC, regardless of whether or not you finished the campaign, if you simply go to a world stone, you can activate this DLC as part of an adventure mode, which is the standard way you would roll an area outside of the main campaign. The catch here is that you only start it this way once, because this allows you to directly start this particular area in La Somme. After you do this the first time, this new area gets rolled into the possible variations of going on adventure mode in that world. Meaning the first time you run through it, it's fairly set, but afterwards it joins the pool of procedures generated options when you roll this particular world. And upon doing so, you'll be greeted in a new area called the Forlorn Coast, which really digs deep into the already Bloodborne inspired imagery that this world was pretty well known for. And while much of what we're going to see here is things that we could already see in this particular world, there is some new stuff including a few different enemy types, mini bosses, locations, dungeons, etc. So this is effectively a huge new area to explore with all sorts of of extra potential procedural generation added to the world afterwards. And all of those new encounters and things of course come with new weaponry, new items, which means new variations for your build. The mini bosses in the area as well as the final boss can drop new items for you which will lead to new weapons, which all have their own interesting effects. But to top it off in terms of rewards and of course added build diversity is the new archetype, the Ritualist. This is pretty easy to find but does technically require unlocking and there's a few guides out there for it already, but in the area area of the forlorn coast with all of the boats in the water you can find a small cave and in that cave you'll find one of the new enemy types performing a ritual of some sort and after you defeat her you'll be able to pick up the archetype item that we then need to take back to our hub before we can turn it into a class we can equip. After you've done that you can check it out in the menus and you'll see all sorts of abilities focused around dealing damage based on status effects. The ritualist is all about dropping these status effects on enemies and then capitalizing on them. They're going to get bonuses to their duration, the damage they deal, and a few other abilities to go along with that. And given how Remnant 2 allows you to mix two archetypes together to make your build, this comes with a lot of potential in terms of what it'll add to the game, as you can effectively mix this with every other class already in the game, which should make for some pretty interesting builds for people to come up with. Now without diving into very specific info about what to fight and where to go, that's about all you need to know about this DLC. In total, like most areas of the game, it's going to run probably three to five hours depending on how quickly you're going, and there are a few different outcomes to the story like there is in every other world, so the choices you make and how you deal with those can affect that as well. So if you want to see everything, expect more than three to five hours of course, but in that ballpark if you only want to run
run through at once. So to sort of start wrapping this up, I do think they picked the coolest area of the game to expand, though given one of my main complaints about the base game was that there wasn't a lot of unique areas to begin with, I do think it's a shame they didn't simply go for making an entirely new world. But I can see why they wanted to wrap up this storyline at the same time. I also think the archetype itself is pretty cool, and a lot of its abilities actually somewhat leaned into a type of gameplay I was already going for, and depending on how much you enjoy that archetype, there's a good chance you'll use it outside of much more than the content available in this DLC. So with all of that said, you can buy this DLC for $9.99 US and whatever that amounts to regionally for people, which I do think is the right price, that is about what I was willing to pay for it and is what I paid for it, but broadly speaking I would say where it stumbles is that it doesn't add a ton of new variety in terms of things like enemies, or locations in particular. So I think for most people, whether or not you should get this DLC comes down to how much you enjoyed the base game, because it's really just more of that. So if you were looking for an excuse to play more Remnant 2, then I think it's a pretty good DLC to take a look at. But that is going to do it for this video. I certainly hope you enjoyed it. If you did, like, comment, subscribe, all that YouTube jazz. But regardless of any of that, truly, just thank you so much for watching. I really do appreciate it. May you wander in wisdom and have an amazing day.